All right. I I think we're recording. I do not know. Let me see. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. So thank you so much for joining us for Busy 101. And I think this is really, you know, I was telling the students in the video that really what you're sharing is very, it's very important. Uh, and you give another perspective. And I think um, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the floor, but I think uh, uh, the last time we met when you talked about some of the things the students should think about when they're on an interview, when they're about to take a job, as far as their content, and some of the, I thought that was very valuable. So if you could please touch on that, and, and the floor is yours. If you could just uh, give a brief introduction and then uh, it, take it away. Certainly. Well, thank you, Professor Akpan. Oh, my, uh, uh, my name is Charles Blatteis, and I am an, a lawyer, and uh, Professor Akbon has asked me to give you some information. I'm going to share my screen with you so that you can see uh, what this is about. We'll be talking about intellectual property. Good news, everyone. Um, you don't have to be an intellectual to own this property. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're safe. You're good, okay? Don't worry. Um, if you are an intellectual, that's great. Um, the, the thing about intellectual property, it's, it's, it's that intangible. And you as SCAD students, my daughter is a SCAD student, so I'm very, this is near and dear to my heart. The intangible things that you create, you want to protect. And in this day and age, especially in this day and age where you have every everybody is on their computers for hours and hours a day now especially during the covid situation where people are working from home or virtually attending classes you're probably making more art and having more time to be creative in some respects and so the the you want to protect that which you come up with as a artist as a creative as an inventor um, as a writer as an author of some creative work and that's where intellectual property is all, that's what it's all about. Protecting those intangible, wonderful things that you uh, students are coming up with. So let me go ahead uh, and begin. Just a little bit about me. I am uh, 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 an attorney and I uh, uh, have done a lot of work in the community, uh, including uh, being former director of the Federal Reserve Bank uh, here in Memphis, uh, the chairman of the board, one of the 12, sorry, 25 of the uh, 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 chairman of a bank or branch in the U.S. for three years out of the seven I spent, I was on the board, done a lot of other uh, major uh, uh, board activities as well as being a lawyer. And so uh, what I bring to you is a lot of business experience. And uh, uh, my big claim to fame, I think for you, is that I know I've represented folks in your position and my, my daughter is one of them. And so I know a little bit about your concerns and can, hopefully I can address them so that you think as going out in the workforce, what's gonna happen? What should you be prepared for? Professor Akpon asked me to talk about, you know, when you apply for a job and when you're doing how, some, some tips and tricks and hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll learn some things. This is not by any means gonna be your whole intellectual property that you'll always know, but hopefully it will give you a good overview for your survey class. And I hope you're enjoying your summer session. I know my daughter did with uh, Professor Akpan last spring. So what is it? First of all, property rights for the information and intellectual goods created by individuals and businesses, usually for a limited period of time. Okay, that's the definition. And it's important, businesses can own it and individuals can own it. And when you work for a company, you're probably making property for the company, not for yourself, okay? important to keep that in mind because people think, well, I invented it, it's mine. Well, when you go in, you sign a contract with a company, usually on the very first day, you're usually signing away your intellectual property rights. So you have to be very cautious about that, which you're developing for your company. And that's what you're developing for yourself on your own time. Um, people have had some real bad nightmarish situations when they come up with their best work and it doesn't even belong to them. So be aware of that. Okay, the purpose is so that you want to be able to create intellectual property and make it monetize it. This is a business class that you're in. So um, the, the big gap and one of the things that's a real feather in SCAD's cap is to have Professor Akpan and folks like him who teach business because art is a business. 
I, as a lawyer, know the law is a business, but it's very easy to get trapped and focused in that which you do. The highest, best use of you isn't being an intellectual property attorney. It's being creating that intellectual property, but you should know how to protect it. You want to make it monetize it so you can sell it and make money off of it, but you also need to protect it because you would be surprised to how people copy. Uh, I'll give you a few horror stories from my daughter's uh, life. She's your age and then you're, she's a, a rising junior. And so she knows um, how awful it is when somebody steals your work. And it's amazing, you know, the better you get, the more, it's, a, it's, a, it's an insult and it's a, it's a compliment at the same time, but you've gotta be very careful. I'll show you some stuff to give you an idea. The, the main purpose is that, is to let you profit from your goods and, and create them and make a living. So why don't we go ahead and begin with um, some examples, okay? There's major areas, trademarks and service marks, okay? At the, this is one of the most common one. And Coca-Cola, which is there in Georgia and Atlanta based, is a good example because it's got so, all of these different areas of intellectual property that is very useful for you to make distinctions. You see the Coca-Cola design right here where that I'm, I'm highlighting. And then um, their service mark, have a Coke and a smile or Coke adds life. These are both um, the parts of the, their, their, their intellectual property that they have copyrighted and protected. Um, a trademark is the sign designer expression which distinguishes the products from a, a, of a particular uh, person or author from similar products of other people. And so if you look here, you know that's Coca-Cola. You don't have any doubts because Coca-Cola is that way. But look, look at these other Coca-Colas. <laughs> look at this Pepsi. Can you see that? It says Pepsi. That would pull, that's, I, that's, that's obviously without permission, but it's done in, um, it is a, 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 you do have some license to use um, a, a, a trademarked goods for commentary for newspapers and for um, um, discussion, but not to sell a product. Pepsi cannot appropriate Coca-Cola's design and mark, but you can see how distinctive it is. Even if you see the Pepsi there, you think Coca-Cola, the white lettering on the red background. This is Coca-Cola in South Korean, in Korean. So you can see they've, tried, they've created their own font and everything. So let's go back up to, um, that, that was, a, I think I skipped ahead and what I really wanted to start with was copyright. So I will come back to the Coca-Cola exam, uh, example um, because there's more to it. But copyright is a good place to begin because if you write it down, now you have, you have, you have a right, you've created intellectual property. Copyright attaches from the time you write it, but to get the legal protections, you have to register it. You can register it with your state, but your best thing to do is to go to the US Patent and Co Trademark Office and register your copyrights and your trademarks and your patents there. Okay, so when you, it, writing is the obvious thing for copyright, but there's more. Photography falls into that. Uh, yeah, sculpture falls into that. Uh, you can uh, copyright music that you've written down. But this writing it down is so important. I bet your professors have told you, uh, let's do the elevator pitch, right? So you, 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 you're, you're used to going in and telling somebody an idea. You want to get funding, say, for a movie or for some project that you want to do. So you've got it down so that you could tell somebody in an elevator when it goes up for a couple of floors, you can pitch them the idea that succinctly. Well, that's great, write it down. Because what happens is some of those people get off on the top floor and they go in to the people you can't meet and they pitch the same idea and you steal it. You think it doesn't happen, but you the, the our court cases are littered with this same situation. You've probably heard of some of your favorite artists um, having been sued or, 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 or suing others because their songs, they've sent in a tape or a CD or a USB to somebody else to, that's a favorite of theirs to get, inspire them to get, write a song, with their, to sing their song. And later they find out they did, but they're not attributed or get any money from it. And it's happened and it, people steal ideas. So you put it in writing, then you've, you've saved yourself. In fact, in that example that I just gave you in the court cases, people have been able to show date stamps and that they sent this to this person and then they used that song 
or that that lick or whatever that piece of music was that was presented to them and made money off of it and they've been able to collect uh, money from that so that's copyright one of the most important areas of uh of of the law okay next let's go to the trademark so we talked about the the this this distinguishing mark so that people know what it is you know pepsi's got a different design you know sprite is a different design and it, it works for anything ibm apple all of these different great trademarks brand the product and they have to protect them so that people don't steal them and use them for other things um and that's the purpose behind these marks they have to acquire a secondary meaning all its own um, so when you see FedEx, you see Kleenex, you see um, Levi's, you see different um, brands, that's where these marks come in. So one of the smartest things you can do, and my daughter has done this as an example, and they teach this at SCAD, is that you should come up with your own design for your own, your own logo. What you are in is in the name of the game, not just for intellectual property, but I will bet you uh, Professor Akpan will reinforce this fact, is creating your own brand. People now are, are, you know, they will buy something from some brand because they trust it. More, it, it may be identical to an off-brand product, but then because it has that brand, you have a level of trust, has extra value, and that's why you want to create it and it will protect you um, over time. You know, a Picasso is worth a lot more than a, a, a John Smith, even if they're the same painting, okay? So I showed you the examples of the, how marks can be manipulated, but you also see how they are well, so well known. Now, trade secrets. What is a trade secret? Well, you know, um, one of my friends, I remember in high school told me, um, you, you know how to keep a secret check? And I said, how? And I, he, he said, don't tell anyone. <laughs> That's, it sounds so simple, right? Everybody loves to talk. I am amazed how quickly people talk. Um, I, uh, for example, I'm re reaching you today from my home. We're getting the house painted. Um, we, they just started painting it. I've gotten texts from neighbors. Oh, it looks great. <laughs> I haven't even seen it. Walked outside yet. It's uh, people talk. News travels fast. And so uh, in the case of my daughter, I know she's put stuff online and people have copied it in other countries and have derived works from it. It's crazy. She's a student, you know, but as you students get to be famous and well known and thousands and thousands of people start copying your work, it happens. So you, if it's something that you don't want other people to have, then you should keep it a secret. Uh, 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 my daughter is preparing and I'm sorry, I'm using her as an, uh, going back to her, but I do want to use her as an example for your purposes. Um, she's working on her website for portfolios now. And one thing she's looked at and she's seen in other folks who are, have been successful is they have a, uh, an area of their website that they click on that for you have to give a password. So it has some more recent and secret works that she doesn't want out there for everyone to see. So if somebody is coming to look at her website and is going to interview her, she can put that work under, you know, more of a lock and key. And with the logo on it, if anybody copies it, then it becomes more obvious that they've copied it. I'll try and show you some of that, those examples. But why I'm on trade secrets, and I was telling you the way to keep a secret is you don't tell anyone. Well, the formula for Coca-Cola is a great example. The formula for Coca-Cola is a big secret. Um, they have not told anyone uh, that, how to make it. Only the CEO and one or two other people know it, and it's kept in a vault. You may ask, well, why don't you patent it? It's, a, it's, a, it's something that's, um, that should be protected that way. Well, guess what? When you patent it, you have to file something with the patent office. You're going to list the mix and the process and, and when you put in the sugar and when you put in the syrup and when you put in the, the uh, carbonation, different things which will give away the secret to making it. So it's kept a secret. Uh, another example of this, very famous, Kentucky Fried Chicken. No one but the certain people in the company know the special mix to make that breading for the Kentucky Fried Chicken uh, 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 breading on their fried chicken. And so that's, that's an area of intellectual property that's well overlooked that I strongly recommend you keep in mind because, you know, you, 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 
keep a secret and then you're gonna, it's not stolen as easily. Now let's talk about patents. Patents are for processes. Um, people always say, I've got an idea, I wanna patent it. You can't patent an idea. I know it doesn't sound right, but you cannot patent an idea. Um, you can patent a process with an idea. And I'll give you a, a real example from my own life. I have a patent, you see these bananas here. I have a banana a patent to turn green bananas into glucose syrup. Sounds very boring, but um, it's uh, actually a very environmentally friendly way to make a, 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 a preservative and additive to foods and to the detergents that uh, replaces phosphates and it's good for the environment. And you can use it by uh, uh, putting a banana into a uh, some with mixing it with catalysts and it create creates a uh, starchy syrup that you can then ferment and make glucose and MSG and baker's yeast and a number of different things. How did I come up with it? I worked for a company doing a project to make citric acid in the former Soviet Union. I was approached by people from Ecuador who said we have hundreds of thousands of tons of waste banana. What can we do with it? Uh, and the company I was working for was taking raw materials, feedstock, and turning it into a finished good. And here was one that's worth, you know, they, they can't, they have to throw it in crevasses. It's a pestilence. It causes uh, 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 insects to, and to, to, to um, live there and eat the, and deteriorate the, the bananas. And they, they, they just can't make enough clarified banana juice, banana chips, and baby food. And, animal feed and you, you, you don't realize why there's so much waste banana, but all the bananas you see in the supermarket are perfect. The ones that have a little insect bite or twisted, et cetera, they get thrown away. And that, that was the basis for this patent, which is to turn this around. You had to have different things. So you had to have something that is um, uh, three main requirements. It has to be new. It has to be non-obvious, not obvious, and there needs to be an industrial applicability. In that case, I had the idea I was working with a scientist to do make the citric acid out of sugar beets in the Ukraine, which was something I learned because it had high starch. And so I said, well, why can't we do that with the bananas? And we had a, an assistant to the scientist. She followed the instructions backwards and she did it in a non-obvious fashion. She screwed up. It was a great mistake because it was able, we were able to patent it because it was not obvious. We, everything, turned out to be very productive in producing the syrup um, in the way that no one ever expected. So that's how we patented it. And it had to be written down. The idea was not enough. My idea, turning green bananas into glucose syrup for fermentation, great idea, not patentable. Writing down the process, going through the, how it worked and applying it to make a manufacturing facility is how we got patents in it in 15 countries. Here are some other areas, trade dress and industrial design. I know a number of you are students who do design. This is, um, going back to Coca-Cola, another great example. If you look at these different glasses, jars, you understand how the design of the Coca-Cola glass, uh, uh, Coca-Cola bottle is a fantastic design and it's unique and it has its own secondary meaning and so it's protected. You can't put, legally, you cannot put Pepsi in the same jar. You look around, you don't see people using the same bottles as Coca-Cola, they cannot because they're protected. Now, Coca-Cola is smart on this. If you've ever been to the Coca-Cola Museum, they'll do take this uh, bottle, one of these two bottles here in the center, and they will put a cup that's very relatively small in front of them and pour it out, and you would be surprised how little is in that tall jar bottle. That tall bottle, that design, not only is it a great design because it's it's got a neat look to it, and but and you can grip it and it can stay cold in that glass. Um, longer, uh, but also it holds less product and it looks like than it, than it looks like. So there's a great applicability and you design majors, I'm sure can think about the, and know about these sorts of things that can be protected. Okay, those industrial design rights and trade dress are also intellectual property that's worth protecting. Oops, I think, um, yeah, that was the final slide. So let me show you a, um, see if I can't open some, uh, can you still see my screen? Yes? Okay. Yes. Okay, so let me, um, let me put in here, uh, what were we looking for? Uh, 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 Super Amy, let me see if that works. Okay, this image uh, here, 
that's done by my daughter. And I, um, I can't, we can't see it. You can't see it. Let me see if I can um, get it to. Get it to work. What I did is. Um, can you see that? Yes. Okay. So what I did is I typed in Super Amy and that's a concept my daughter came up with and you can see here um, what appears. Okay. What's unfortunate is her, she has a logo on it and it doesn't appear here. Let's see, she just to set up her Wix site, maybe it's here. Can you see, still see my computer screen? Yes. What do you see? Do you see? Um... Leah's ideas. Okay, there you go. So here, I want to show you something and how the, the, the issues arrive. My daughter has come up with this, um, and this is a tip for you. You put in a logo, right? See where it says Leah's ideas here? Mm -hmm. That protects her, her, her work from copies. Unfortunately, somebody's cropped it out. See that? <laughs> um, and that's a problem. But uh, you have to try very hard to protect yourself, but by putting it out there and having your own logo is a great way to do it. Uh, Let me tell you a war story and uh, in that regard. I'm gonna uh, go back and show you why that logo is so important. I had a, I, I represented an architectural firm. They showed their, uh, find where did, okay, they, put in a watermark like this, but even smaller. Hmm. Can you see that where it says Leah's ideas? Yes. At the bottom. They had it very, very small. And the company that they, was a construction company that they were talking with that was going to build houses. They looked at the houses, the designs. They said, hey, you know, this is great. We don't want to use your designs. Then to uh, the, my client's surprise, they started seeing the, their designs being used to build these guys' houses. These people had stolen the designs, copied them, and even put them on their brochures. We took them to court, put the, their brochures up on a, on a screen, and in federal court, zoomed in, zoomed in, and zoomed in, and you could see the logo of my client hidden in what had been copied. We won that case and showed that they had stolen copyrighted material, okay? So... That's how you, you got to do that. You have to put in watermarks. You have to put in, um, I mean, there's, unfortunately, you have to be very vigilant and protect yourself and send cease and desist letters sometime. Um, but to register it is the most important way. Now, I've been talking for a while, and I know, I think you, I don't know if um, how, the time I have on this is if it's half an hour or an hour, but I wanted to take a break right now so that Professor Akpan can give me some feedback and about any questions or information you'd like to add. Yeah, we're, we're right at time. So it's at three o'clock. So I wanted to just, um, and I want to be respectful of your time. I just have one question or, or request. If you could speak on some of the, th well, you touched on it. As far as if students are going for a uh, job interview or some, some of the things to think about as far as, if you can go in a little more detail around that. All right. Okay. So when you're working for yourself, it's very simple. You know that you have, uh, uh, that you own the intellectual property. Um, but when you are hired, what, the whole concept comes from what's called works for hire. And if you do a work for hire, somebody pays you to do a portrait of them, obviously the portrait's going to belong to them. Now, if you're under contract labor, then you can say, okay, I'm going to do this one thing for your movie. I'm going to do a 10 second scene and it's going to do be about this. All right. Uh, 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 Thor climbing up the side of a mountain or flying or whatever. Okay. You're get, they allow you to use their idea and you're supposed to bring it to life. It belongs to your employer. If you work for them as an employee, they are probably going to have you sign over on day one, all of your rights for everything you make. So if you're making something that is, um, that you want to keep for yourself, do it after hours. Keep a log even 
Um, make sure you don't present it to them. Don't do it on your work computer. Use your own personal computer. Save it to your own drive. Okay. The more information that shows that you've always intended this to be separate and that it was done on your own time, then you're safe. Okay. But beware, read what you're signing. Usually they're written by attorneys who are very one-sided. They have the very, they're only looking out for the company and they have you sign everything over that you've made between X date and Y date. Well, you should be able to point out that everything work related between X date and Y date. Don't be afraid to scratch on there and say work related or put an asterisk and talk to them. They're creative people as well that you'll be dealing with and say, I would like to exclude my own personal work in that time frame. And they should say, of course, of course, we don't mean that. But you, do, you know, people come up with great ideas and then they're going to say, no, no, that belongs to us. And um, sometimes it does. I mean, I represent employers too. And they've said, you know, this person has created an identity with me. They have created, um, uh, 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 they have a whole social media platform that they're doing, um, for instance, with radio. I represent some radio stations and they, the radio personality creates a lot of intellectual property, but then they wanna move over to another station. Well, the, my clients said, no, we're investing the money, we're getting it out there. You know, that whole social media platform and all the people who are coming in, that belongs to us. They can't just copy it and take it. So in, the intellectual, in, the, in their agreement on intellectual property and in their employee handbook, it specifically states it doesn't belong to them. All right. So that's something that you need to be aware of. Okay. Um, because you may just be making something for your employer that you don't intend to. So that that's my tip on that. You want to be um, very aware of separating that which is personal or that which is a project that you would like to pitch later on your own versus that which is for the employer. So the a scope of work is really important in your contract saying, I am making a scene that lasts 15 seconds animated for this character to do this thing. That's how you do it. If you say I'm do everything I do for you for the next month and then in that month you also are working on your favorite um, project and then, then you've just signed it over. So be wary of that. See, that was great. Thank you so much for that. and. Uh, just on the final note, how, if, if they have any questions, how could they get in touch with you? Uh, I don't know if it was on the PowerPoint, but uh, you can email me and feel free and um, I'll be happy to give you some feedback. Charles at bladicelaw.com. That's C-H-A-R-L-E-S at bladicelaw, one word, B as in big, L-A, T as in Tom, another T as in Tom, E I S L A W dot com. Make sure you reference your one of Professor Akbon's students, if you would. Awesome. And everybody, be careful out there, isn't the? You must be close to that hurricane. I see you inside, Professor Akbon. It must yeah. be. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it yeah. must be a yeah. hurricane outside. Yeah. Well, not not yet. Thank goodness, not yet. But uh, I, I hope it it does it doesn't. I know it's supposed to uh, move this way. So, yes. Well, be careful. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. We'll give you a hand clap. Thank you for this. My and pleasure. I will, see, I will see you on Wednesday. See you on Wednesday. All right, thank from you. A, from my office, I hope. <laughs> Take care. All right, bye-bye.